All right, so how are you guys all doing today? Yeah. Awesome, so we are Team Murado. Uh, to go ahead and start out with, uh, just give you a brief introduction of some of the things we are going to talk about today. I'll just go ahead and let you guys look over that for just a second. Uh, and we will go ahead and dive right into the fiction real quickly. So, Arado takes place in a peaceful society similar to our own. However, there is a highly technological race called the Sovereign that intend to take over this society and enslave all the people in it. So, what they do is they go through this process called the correction. And the correction has three phases. The first phase is they erase all forms of like religion, mythological creatures, anything that isn't, you know, essentially like fact or, um, you know, fact. And then what they do is they start to blind all the people. They essentially partially blind them so they're good enough that they can work, but they're blinded so much that they can't really rebel or try to escape. And this is done to, you know, continue to suppress the people. And then the last phase is they actually separate the children from their families as well. So what ends up happening is our main character, which is the girl right here, she gets separated from her family and becomes severely depressed. Because of this, the sovereign soldiers decide that it would probably be better to go ahead and just kill her off rather than just having her mope around and stuff all day. So as she is about to be killed off, she reflects back to when her mom used to read her stories of these mythological creatures that would sometimes come and help those in aid. And in a brief instant, she is able to actually summon the god of destruction which comes and protects her and saves her from being killed. Uh, after being saved, essentially, she learns that her family is being held in the inner part of the city uh, where the sovereign forces are the heaviest. That's where they keep all the adults. So she sets out on a mission to find her family, uh, which the demon accompanies her as well through that. And that actually leads us into the main goal of the game, which is you need to safely escort this girl into the inner city. The player plays as the demon, and some of the obstacles that stand in his way of accomplishing this goal, obviously, are the enemy soldiers themselves, but also the girl has a personality of her own, and you have to try to control that as well as she pushes further into the city. Uh, some of the things that help you, though, on this goal are the demon's abilities themselves, and you also have the ability to actually shape her personality throughout the course of the game as well. So we'll go into some of the basic mechanics real quick. Uh, the first one is that we have a fully interactable environment. This is one of the things that we really wanted to try to do. It, you know, it is a big undertaking, but we really like how it turned out. So you have the ability to decay or erode anything in the environment that's essentially an object. Uh, this, you know, at, at first seems like, oh yeah, it's kind of cool, we can just decay stuff. But what we wanted to really do is actually have that evolve into further gameplay mechanics. So some of those are, essentially like emer emergent navigation. So as you get further into the cities and there's more and more buildings, you could realize that there's a huge group of sovereign soldiers over here, and, but you could find that if you destroy all the buildings, you can kind of go around them. We want to be able to have the player be able to kind of carve their path as they get through the game and <clears> use that ability to destroy stuff to maneuver the way they want to. Uh, also, being able to use the rubble from the buildings that are destroyed and stuff as offensive and defensive abilities. A uh, defensive ability would be like creating a, uh, a wall of debris to put in front of the girl that would protect her from incoming fire. Or an offensive ability would be to, to take this rubble and essentially like throw it at the soldiers and kill them with the rubble itself. So while you know, destroying the environment is cool and all other games do that as well, what we really feel that our differentiator is the, is the girl AI system that we are, are implementing. So, what happens is you can only indirectly control the girl. You can essentially tell her one of two commands. You can tell her to take cover or follow me, and that's about it. But she has a complex personality that as you move through the game, you can actually shape this personality, and that uh, affects how she interacts with the environment, with the soldiers, with the demon himself. So if she's distrusting of the demon and you tell her to command, she may not listen to you. May, she may do what she wants to. Or another example would be if she's extremely courageous, she may feel that she can take on the soldiers herself, even though she's pretty frail and would probably die in a few hits. So these are some of the things that the player has to be aware of as the girl's AI and personality change. They have to accommodate for those changes in her personality as they play the game. <clears throat> So we've talked about the demon and we've talked about the girl's abilities on their own, but they also share a common link that leads to other mechanics as well. Uh, the fact is, is that if the girl dies, the demon dies as well. And this is just mostly kind of within the fiction that uh, 
the demon only exists because the girl believes in him, and she's the only one that can actually see the demon himself. So the demon himself is invincible. So this creates a situation where the girl essentially serves as the player's health pool. And of course, you know, like I said before, she's a mobile health pool that kind of does what she wants. So your, your health is running all around the level and you have to control her while also destroying soldiers at the same time. Uh, and all this kind of comes together in a tagline that we kind of developed as just a, a quick little thing to help remember the game, which is, Arado is an escort mission full of, destru of destruction. So now that we have um, gone into some of the mechanics and stuff, Zach is going to go ahead and actually load up the game, and we're going to show you what we have. Um, and I'll explain some stuff, I'll turn down the lights a little bit. So as Zach moves through the level, you can see that the girl follows the demon. Um, and you know, if you tell her to, to follow you, she'll catch up and she'll do her best to keep up with you as possible. Uh, this first area is essentially set in a quarry. This is the outer part of the city. This is intended to be like the beginning level for the player, where there's not a lot of action going on. The buildings are kind of sparsed out. Uh, and that's intended to allow the player to get into the feel of the game. So we're going to go ahead and destroy a few of the objects here to show you kind of the destruction abilities that we have. eventually is that it could like weaken metal and then we would have the demon where you could actually like physically punch objects and like destroy them so to be able to destroy a crate you'd have to rust it and weaken it actually <clears throat> and so like I said you know everything is um, destructible in the environment or interacts in one way or another <clears throat> As you can tell, too, we have a camera system that is, um, it's an on-rails camera system that we built. And the, the purpose is that the camera itself will uh, follow the player, but we actually have full control over how this camera works. We can zoom it in however far we want. We can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, and we also have this free look camera which Mac is showing. And this is intended, so if you lose sight of the girl or anything, you can turn you know, the camera to make sure you can see where she's at. So as we move forward, um, Zach can show like the girl can actually go and hide. So like he tells her to take cover, um, she'll actually run over to this crate um, and try to find a spot that you know actually she can take cover under. After a while, though, too, the girl will um, eventually just come back to you. You know, like she'll she'll stay in a state and hiding for a while, and then just eventually wander out back on her own as well. Uh, and you know, kind of show off the camera system. Like I said, we can push in with the camera as much as we want. Uh, this is fully um, up to us, however we want the camera angles to look. So it gives us complete control over the look of the game. And so as we round this bin here, we'll actually be getting into some of our mechanics. Uh, the enemies, uh, the enemy assets themselves are just UDK bots, uh, but the AI and stuff that we've developed for them are our own. Um, so we will actually be showing off some combat here in just a second. that we want to do is that the soldiers will actually come after her. 
Uh, and it's active in trying to destroy environments to kill soldiers as well. You, can't, you don't have to just target them. You can destroy the areas around them. Um, and Zach's also going to demonstrate here real quick is the AI and the personality. So if you make her extremely courageous, which would be a slow buildup over throughout the course of the game, but we have it sped up here. Like I said, she may get to the point where she thinks she can fight soldiers herself and will start actually attacking the soldiers. Uh, so, you know, this is important to realize as you shape the girl's personality that you don't want her to go one extreme or the other because this could really start to um, become a detriment if she's running out in front of soldiers trying to kill them while getting shot. So we're going to move a little bit further. Uh, we have one or two more things to show you. We have a guy running here, essentially just as a patrol, um, and we have him set up that if the girl gets close enough, he'll, stay, uh, he'll recognize her and start firing on her. Cower. Yeah, we can make her cower as well, like which would be the opposite if she becomes extremely fearful. I see my gear to go hide over here. So she'll start to freak out after a while if she becomes too fearful as well. And this can become this can present a problem as well because the player um, has to be within a certain range of the girl to actually be able to use their abilities. And this was done, this was intended so that way someone couldn't just tell the girl to hide in a corner, run through half the level, kill all the soldiers, and then grab her again and run through the level. So you have to be within a certain distance. So if she starts to hide in a corner and won't come out because she's freaking out on you, it'd be extremely hard for you to actually, you know, be able to move forward further ahead. And then Zach's also gonna show like you can destroy like this building here and if soldiers or even like if the girl's too close to a building you can damage the girl as well. city in the background so this would be essentially like the first cell we would want to expand this a little bit more as well but this would start to move into the next areas of the city. All right. so like I said obviously moving forward like I said we want to move um, into the further as we push into the city so we have uh, three levels kind of planned out. We start out with the outer city, which is what you saw, and then there would be the middle city, which would start to blend more residential with industrial, and you would start to see some of the sovereign technology in the area. And then the inner city would be, you know, full sovereign technology, uh, you know, buildings really close packed together, and more soldiers, and so the level of difficulty would ramp up, and also the possibilities of being able to destroy stuff as you move through would increase as well. Uh, we also wanted to um, add more abilities and then just being able to erode stuff because like we said it's cool but you need to have other abilities as well um, we talked about that with like the rubble being able to shield the girl and using it as an offensive ability as well and we also want to have more enemy types as well so now that we've kind of showed you what we have and where we plan to go i want to also emphasize why we feel that as a team we can actually accomplish this and get this game to the point that we want it to by the end of june or july so as we continue to work on the game, we've continued to evolve a lot of the design stuff as well. So what you guys see on your left is some of the initial design notes that we had, and on the right is some of the things that we've changed as we've moved through, um, as we've prototyped, as we've played the game. So um, we start to, you know, we've started to evolve some of this. And we've also um, learned a lot of lessons in the way that we go through our processes as well. Uh, one of this was, you know, the destructible environment set us, you know, it, I don't know if it set us back, but it, it was a huge hurdle to overcome and it put a lot of pressure on our artists and our programmers to get it done. Uh, but we're fully satisfied with the way it is now. And now that we've gone through that and through the level design and our prefab process, we have those down. So we know exactly how we can, how we can go about doing those. And um, so one of the last things I wanna talk about too is our team. Uh, as you can see from the burn down charts here, you know, we're using Scrum, which has helped to kind of uh, give us a clear idea of how we're accomplishing our goals. 
The fact is, is our team works extremely hard and we constantly meet all our goals. And as you can tell from the third burn down chart, we've gotten really well at managing our time properly throughout the sprint to actually hit everything as we're going as well. Um, so we work very hard, but we also play very hard as well. So, you know, we, we have some fun. You know, you gotta keep it lighthearted as well as you're, you know, making games. Um, so to briefly recap everything again, uh, like we said, our game is an escort mission full of destruction. Um, as we continue to refine our processes, we feel like we're in great shape now to move forward at a faster pace because we know um, how the processes need to work and the, all the groundwork has now been laid out for that. And we feel that our team is more than capable of finishing this game um, by June or July. Uh, and a lot of that is contributed to our work hard, play hard attitude. So I'm gonna go ahead and have our leads come up and we will open it up to questions and comments. Okay.